John Upton. I'm a researcher at Chagas Moor Park and we're here this morning on a Glen Tour farm and the purpose of the visit here today is really to have a look at the farm's electricity consumption and see if there's any areas for potential improvement. So the method we've deployed here this morning is described in the Chagas Dairy Farm Infrastructure Workbook and it follows a simple two-step procedure. First of all we look at the farm's electricity bills and we calculate how much electricity is costing them per litre milk produced over the last 12 months. It's a very, very simple task that can be done within any discussion group to help benchmark farmers' electricity costs across the last 12 month period. So we get our hands on the electricity bills and also the milk production receipts, divide one by the other and we arrive at our electricity cost figure. So this farm here is coming in at about 0.6 9 cent per litre, which is a little bit above average, but it's not too bad. Uh, the average across a range of farms that we've studied in the past is coming in at about 0.5 cent per litre. So we're just going to look at some of the elements of the infrastructure today on the farm to help these farmers reduce their energy costs and get that down below the national average figure. So on this particular farm, they've installed a 24 unit milking parlour and over the years of the energy audits that we've done across 60 commercial farms across Ireland, we've found that on average, the vacuum pumps and the milking machine consumes about 20% of overall dairy farm electricity demand. And one of the best ways to reduce the running costs of the vacuum pump is to install a variable speed control or a variable speed drive onto these vacuum pumps. And what these variable speed drives do is simply reduce the speed of the motors while milking is occurring and when there's very little demand for vacuum at the cluster end. And then when there's a high demand for vacuum in the instance where washing is occurring or else where a cluster falls off in the parlour, these variable speed drive motors ramp up the full power to help meet that demand. Um, across a range of studies and across many commercial installations in Ireland, we've seen that these variable speed drive vacuum pumps consistently reduce the demand for electricity of the milking machine by between 50 and 60 percent. Um, on a farm like this with three phase electricity, the return on investment is very, very good, typically less than five years, and it can be even less when they're installed as new under the TAMS grant um, facilitated by um, a new installation. So we're here standing next to the water heaters on this farm and they've opted to install two 300 litre water cylinders to supply the hot water demands for the milking machine. This is more than adequate. Uh, for a 20 unit parlour you would looking, be looking to heat about 250 litres of hot water. Um, from the electricity bill analysis that we've carried out, we've seen that this farm is using 33% of their energy at night time. Um, ideally we'd like to get that up towards 45 or 50%. And one suggestion here would be to move these water heaters onto nitrate electricity to reduce running costs. For example, heating 100 litres of hot water on day rate with these water heaters would cost 2 euros, whereas moving over to nitrate would cost a euro. Um, this farm is currently paying 16 cents per unit on day rate and 7.5 cents per unit on nitrate. So there, there are big savings to be had by moving over to as much nitrate as possible. Um, one solution going forward for this particular farm would be to look at installing solar PV or solar photovoltaic cells to help heat this water and use these water heaters as an energy storage mechanism for that solar energy. Um, the solar PV cells could be easily installed on the roof and they hopefully will be grant dated again going forward to reduce the cost of installing them by 40% and this should hopefully increase the payback period significantly, bringing the average return on investment for solar PV with a 40% grant down to between 6 and 7 years. So this would be a big um, improvement in terms of reducing CO2 emissions and also help reduce fossil energy use. So we're standing here in the dairy We've opted to install uh, an 18,000 litre direct expansion full tank along with a, a well water plate cooler. And this, in my view, is a very cost efficient system to both install and to operate. 
So what we're aiming for here really with the plate cooler is to reduce the milk coming from the milking machine down to within 5 degrees Celsius of the incoming well water temperature. So for example, if our well water is coming in at 10 degrees, we're looking to have the milk coming out of this plate cooler here at 15 degrees. So we're looking for that 5 degree differential between well water in and milk out. This is effectively taking about 50% of the energy out of the milk before it goes into the bulk tank. Then, when it comes into the bulk tank here, we're hoping to do as much of the morning cooling and nitrate as possible. So we nitrate ours from midnight to 9 a.m. So hopefully we're going to get this milk cooled before 9, and then in the evening we'll be running this tank on day eight. But since we produce most of our milk in the morning anyway, and that's not really an issue. The running cost of these tanks is still very, very low. And so it's part to what I suppose that the return on investment of the plate cooler here would be one of the highest returns of any energy efficiency project that you may consider. And they generally pay for themselves in less than five years. And for farmers looking to evaluate the effectiveness of any particular energy efficient technology such as bay coolers, solar PV, heat recovery, or variable speed drives, Chagas and CIT have developed the Dairy Energy Efficiency Calculator, which can be used by both farmers and advisors free of charge to work out the return on investment or the simple payback period for any energy efficiency or renewable energy technology.